Hello everyone, this is Alice Gao. In this video, I'm going to discuss the clicker question in lecture 8 on slide 17. I'm showing you right here. So we have a perceptron and the activation function is the step function. The question is asking you, what should the three weights be such that the perceptron represents an end function? In the main lecture video, I told you the answer that I came up with. It's minus 1.5, 1, and 1. And there are also other possible answers. Now let me show you how I derived these answers. For this question, we are essentially trying to learn a perceptron using a tiny data set. Right? We have a data set of four po data points. This is our truth table. So the key idea is to realize what the data set looks like and also what the perceptron is trying to do. So the perceptron is essentially a linear classifier, a linear function, which we're trying to come up with to separate the positive and negative examples. Let me first produce a graph which can help you visualize what the data set is trying to do. We have only one positive example, which is at the point 1, 1. So let me use this shaded circle to represent that. Then all other three examples are negative. So 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0. These are all negative examples. So we have three negative examples, one positive example. Then the perceptron is essentially a line that we're trying to come up with to separate the positive from the negative examples. As you can see, there is a fairly huge gap between these positive and negative examples, right? So we could come up with many different lines in this gap to separate the two. Now to make our derivation easier and the numbers nicer, I'm going to use one of the nicer lines. So I'll choose one. Let me just add a few more things to make it easier to draw. So I'm going to choose one where, which exactly goes through the middle of the gap. So it sort of goes through here, roughly here, and roughly here. Like that. Right now we just need to derive an expression for this line. So this line goes through the middle of here, right? So the, and the middle of here as well. So if you do some calculation, you will realize that this point is 1.5 and this point here is also 1.5. And this is a, exactly a 45 degree line. So the slope of the line is minus one. So a equation which can represent this line would be if you think about this as y, if you're not used to thinking about x1, x2, if you think about y and x, this will be y is equal to minus x plus 1.5. Right? Slope is minus 1 and y-intercept is 1.5. But we can convert this to x1 and x2. So that becomes x2 is equal to minus x1 plus 1.5. And let's move everything to the left hand side. This will make it easier to convert to our perceptron later on. So that would be x1 plus x2 minus 1.5 is equal to zero. Okay, so, so far this equation is representing the line. But remember that the perceptron is trying to do a classification. So it's trying to choose one side of the line, right? So we need to make sure eventually we came up with the ways to choose the correct side of the line. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, we want to choose the side with the positive example. So we want to choose this top side right here. So how do I usually figure out, figure this out? I usually pick a positive example and plug it in to see if we have the correct number coming out from the left hand side. So let's try this. The positive example is one with one, one, right? So let's plug in x1 is equal to one and x2 is also equal to one. So 
1 plus 1 minus 1.5. This gives us 2 minus 1.5, which is 0 0.5. If we apply the step function, this is a positive number, so our output value would be 1. And that's the correct output value, right? Which means the correct inequality that we want is x1 plus x2 minus 1.5 is greater than 0. Right? There could be the other case. If you do the calculation on this line right here, and if you get a negative value, that means we have to flip all the signs of all the coefficients. Okay? Hopefully we encounter an example later on in your when you're doing your own practice and you can practice that. But for this example, this inequality is the correct one and it correctly selects the side with the positive examples. So finally, we can use this to figure out what are the weights, right? So the weights, we have W11, that's the weight for X1 is one, the coefficient is one. W21, that's the weight for x2, the weight is 1, and then W01, the weight is the constant coefficient, which is minus, minus 1.5. All right, so this is the entire process I used to derive the weights, and by drawing the picture, hopefully you realize that there are many possible solutions available. I just chose one of the nicer ones to make the numbers a little bit nicer. To summarize, how do we derive weights for a perceptron to represent a logical function? We can start by visualizing the data set. And our goal is to come up with a linear function that separates the positive and negative examples. Once we come up with a line, then the expression for this line is going to tell us the weights of the perceptron. That's everything for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.